Water is a major component of most foods. It influences the texture, taste, appearance, and spoilage of food products. There are two types of water measurements, water content and water activity. Water content is something you're probably very familiar with. In fact, you determine water content of a food by drying it to determine moisture loss. In many food processing operations, you need to know moisture content for monitoring processes, labeling purposes, and for specifying cooking instructions. Water activity is something different, but it is an equally important measure and is indicated by this nomenclature, A sub W. It is a very important factor in determining a product's shelf stability and safety. For example, there is much more free water in a fresh fruit than in a jam or jelly, even though they both have a fairly high water content. Why? Because the water in the jam and jelly is bound up structurally and chemically and is not freely available. It is bound up by the sugar. Salt can also be used to bind water. It's an even better binder of water than sugar, about six times better. Pectin and glycerol can also be used. Why is this important in food processing? Simply put, the more free water in a product, the better environment it is for the growth of microorganisms. Water activity is based on a scale of zero to one, with pure water having a water activity of 1.00. Usually products that contain a lower percent moisture have lower water activities. Here we have an array of food products from a high water activity with the apple to the lowest water activity with the breadcrumbs. First, the apple has a water activity of 0.95 and will support the growth of bacteria such as E. coli, Clostridium perfringens, many spoilage organisms and some yeasts. The cheese has a water activity of 0.91 and will support the growth of salmonella, lactobacillus, and some molds. The sausages have a slightly lower water activity of 0.87 and support the growth of yeasts. The condensed milk, when opened, will support the growth of Saccharomyces and Staphylococcus aureus and it has a water activity of 0.8. Moving down the scale, beef jerky has a water activity of 0.75 and will support the growth of salt tolerant bacteria and microtoxic aspergilli. Most meat products with lower water activity levels utilize salt to bind the water as well as drying techniques to lower the total moisture content of the product which in turn lowers the water activity. Jelly has a water activity of 0.65 but actually has a, a high water content of 60 to 70% and will support the growth of yeasts and molds. Dried fruits such as apricots will support the growth of yeasts and molds and have a water activity of 0.4. The dried pasta has 12% moisture but has a water activity of only 0.5. And the breadcrumbs have a water activity of 0.3 and have three to five percent moisture and both the pasta and the breadcrumbs at that low water activity are very shelf stable because they will not support the growth of any microorganisms. So you can see that water activity and moisture content do not easily correlate but we can group these products these products with the higher water activity will support the growth of most microorganisms and bacteria. These products with a middle of the road water activity will support yeasts and molds. And then at the lower spectrum, these products are considered shelf stable and won't support the growth of any microorganisms. Water activity is often used as a measure of shelf stability. So in order to do that, it's great to have an inexpensive unit that you can use in your own processing facility. This unit is quite small and portable. I filled this little sample cup with the jelly, which we know has a water activity of about 0.65. I filled it so that the bottom of the cup is covered. I've ensured that the rim is clean, and then you insert it into the water activity measuring unit. 
and you press the button, you let it equilibrate, and then you get the reading. It's that simple, but of course, you need to make sure that you've calibrated your unit prior to taking the measurements. We did that earlier. We used distilled water, which has a water activity of one, and placed it in. We also used a sodium chloride standard that has a water activity of 0.76. So then we get the top end and mid range for our measurements. To recap, I have shown you products that cover the range of water activities, different organisms that grow at different water activity levels, that water activity and water content do not easily correlate, and how simple it is to measure water activity. If you would like to test your knowledge about water activity, take the test below. Don't worry, you can review this module and repeat the quiz if you need to. To receive a certificate of completion, you will have to complete the quizzes in all the modules in this series. Good luck! See you in the next module! Thank you.